then can you be sure that in other planets uh, a life that doesn't arise or on earth after you have elim eliminated all life it has happened already it has happened before because life can arise again and after millions billions of years it may evolve some kind of consciousness and you're back at the same place this realization that everything is a matter of energy and life has arisen on this planet simply because we are an appropriate distance from the energy source of the sun. We are uh, on an inhabitable planet with an atmosphere that provides for us. We have basically it is a combination of several factors: distance, energy, and time, and that's all it is. Why should intelligent life be easy to evolve in the first place? absolutely no reason to think it. Um, all we know is that it happened here, the one place we have looked, so that might suggest if it happens in one out of one case, it's likely, but of course there's this observation selection effect which guarantees that no matter how unlikely it is, you know, if there are enough planets, it's going to happen somewhere and those are the planets we would find ourselves on. Even if they were one in a billion, 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 billion planets, you know, those would be exactly the places all life would look at and they would think that and it was remarkable that life evolved there, but of course, the observation selection effect guarantees that. So we can't infer from the fact that life evolved here, therefore it's fairly easy for life to evolve on any given planet. Um, and so, so that, that to me seems to answer the, um, the Fermi paradox. Um, it's not really a paradox, because there is no... What is the Fermi paradox? Well, the Fermi paradox is sort of, why is the sky empty? Why haven't we been visited by aliens? Um, and it's a and misnomer should... because a paradox is supposed to be where there are two arguments that each seem compelling but that are sort of in conflict with one another. But here there's just an observation that the sky is empty, but there's no reason to think it shouldn't be. Well, the conflict is, is that certainly most scientists think that the, the uh, observable universe is populated with billions of planets and the likelihood of, of even a small percentage of them and uh, having life, the famous Drake equation, uh, many feel will yield very high numbers of intelligent uh, life forms. It's certainly true that there are lots of planets, but the thing you've got to plug into the so-called Drake equation to get anything out is the probability that any one of those planets will produce intelligent life. That's an unknown quantity. And we have almost no constraints on what the magnitude of that quantity is. Um, and I think possibly what is driving the people who think that it can't be that small is that they overlook this observation selection effect, that the one sample we have, this planet, life evolved, so it seems fairly easy. Uh, but that misses the point that even if it was ridiculously improbable, we would still find ourselves standing on a planet where that improbability occurred. If there are sufficiently many planets, it was bound to happen somewhere. So the fact that life evolved here tells us almost nothing about the probability of life evolving. Um, on the contrary, there are if you look more in detail at how evolution happened on this planet, there are features of that process that makes it perfectly reasonable to think that it could involve extreme coincidences. It takes the stage from prokaryotic to eukaryotic life forms, from simple cells to more complicated cells. As far as we can tell from the uh, geological record, there might have been a period of over one and a half billion years during which nothing obvious happened. So it might just have been that for one and a half billion years, evolution was just playing around with random combinations and uh, eventually it got lucky. And here it happened within one and a half billion years or within 1.8 billion years, but maybe the expected time to get lucky in that random recombination could be you know, trillions of years, so longer than the universe of the life, uh, longer than the lifetime of the universe. If there are sufficiently many planets, it's going to happen somewhere. And on all the planets where it happens, it's got to happen within the lifetime of that planet, limited by the lifetime of its sun. Um, and so if one overlooks the observation selection effect, one might well be misled to believe that this gives us some reason to think intelligent life evolves quite easily. But once you realize that, uh, then there is no reason to think that uh, the evolution is, is at all easy. And if you think about it, I mean, we've never had any sort of complexity increasing 
evolutionary step take place in a lab or being observed in real time. Um, and there are these big evolutionary periods during which we don't see a gradual increment, but some might just have been a leap. And suppose we would.